Hey everyone, well things are looking a bit dicey for security on our PCs, right? Two individual exploits dubbed Meltdown and Spectre have come to light that allow hackers to read what was hitherto considered to be protected memory, potentially opening the door for hackers to access stuff like secure account details, passwords and the like. In fact, the security breach is so severe that it affects processors going back to at least the Core 2 era. And with Spectre in particular, nobody's quite aware of just how much trouble we're really in and how that exploit might evolve over time. Regardless, steps are being taken to plug the gaps and there is talk of profound performance implications. So here's a look at CPU utilization for servers of Epic's Fortnite. Once the patches are in place to secure those servers, there's a huge spike in CPU utilization. I mean, that's not looking good, right? Well, in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the implications for the home PC gamer. Now, obviously, it's early days here, and the amount of data we have is limited. And some might say that the patches we have in place are first gen at best, meaning that more serious implications might manifest further on down the line. But regardless, we're going to go with the data we've got, so let's get going. First of all, I'm not going to concentrate too much on AMD CPUs for now. The firm itself believes that it's relatively insulated from the issues on Meltdown at least, and the focus has been on Intel instead. I'm going to be concentrating on CPU benches from the Core i5-8400, a chip many regard as the best mid-range gaming processor money can buy right now. Now I'm pairing it with an ASUS Maximus 10 Hero motherboard and 2666 MHz DDR4. Now I've chosen the ASUS board because the firm is one of the first out of the gate with microcode updates that help to protect against Spectre. Oh, and as always, we're using an overclocked Titan X Pascal running our titles at ultra settings or near equivalents here. 1080p resolution, the idea being to push CPU workloads to the forefront ahead of the GPU wherever possible. So let's kick off with the worst result that I found out of all of the testing. This is our Witcher 3 benchmark. Now this game thrives on CPU power, threads, cores and crucially memory bandwidth. Here's the i5-8400 running from our legacy benchmarks and it's pretty awesome. Average frame rate 140 frames per second across the entire clip. Okay, first up, let's factor in the new Windows 10 patches and you can see that we're losing a good chunk of performance here. Anything up to 10 frames per second in in-the-moment comparisons. We lose about 9% of performance overall from start to finish. Now let's bring in the same section of gameplay retested with the ASUS BIOS update in play and the gap overall across the entire run of play extends from 9 to 10%. But again, looking at the in the moment performance, there are sections of the bench that show a clear gap between each benchmarking run. I mean, this is not insignificant. But yeah, that really is the worst case scenario I could come up with from my tests. The Ashes of the Singularity CPU benchmark is kind of like a synthetic bench within a game engine. As the three minute benchmark plays out, each of our three runs here can take point at any given moment, owing to variations in the bench from one run to the next. But the bottom line is that by the end, all three runs show no real difference whatsoever. And it's a similar scenario with Assassin's Creed Unity where the variance is less than one FPS between all runs. It comes in with a delta of just 0.4%. Insignificant, basically. Now, I love the Far Cry Primal benchmark because it has a kind of brutal focus on memory bandwidth and single core performance. Now, there is a small degradation in performance across each of the three runs, but it all slots into margin of error, to be honest, and the difference between unpatched and fully patched with microcode updates amounts to a difference of just 1.6% between the best and the worst. Margin of error, really. It's worse here in our Rise of the Tomb Raider test, though the gap between the unpatched run and both of the patched tests comes in at around 4.2% overall. Now of course this is just a range of initial numbers based on our stock tests and I still think that we're still some way off coming up with the definitive methodology for testing CPU gaming performance but there does seem to be a pattern forming here. It seems that games like The Witcher 3 which stream heavily and rely on IO a lot when the engine is pushed to the edge well, they're going to see a performance impact. But let's not forget that we are using an overclocked Titan here to remove the GPU as the bottleneck. 
It's an artificial way to propel the CPU to the forefront, designed to judge relative performance between CPUs when they're pushed to the limit. In your gaming PC, chances are that the GPU will be the defining limitation here. So in the here and now at least, I'd say that the impact of the patches we have is fairly minimal. I think it's IO tasks and virtualization where Intel is gonna be hit hard, mostly in enterprise focused scenarios. But I also did a few more tests. If AMD is more secure, how does the i5-8400 compare in gaming to the Ryzen 5 1600? Quite possibly my favorite Ryzen of all. Yes, The Witcher 3 is hit hard on Intel with the patches based on the results seen so far, but even stacked up against an overclocked Ryzen 5 1600 running at 3.8 GHz with 3200 MHz DDR4, the i5 8400 is still far, far ahead. The gap closes in Ryzen Tomb Raider, but yeah, really and truly, the 8400 is still a fairly decent chunk faster. And of course, most of Intel's super fast single core power is still in full effect. So Far Cry Primal still sees AMD lagging. The security implications are still a bit daunting, but for gaming, Intel still seems to have a significant edge. But Ryzen 5 1600, Ryzen 7 1700, for more general purpose computing and content creation, they're still awesome. And while slower for gaming, well, they're hardly slouches, are they? But something I did want to look into is the performance hits on older processors. So I dug out my old Core i7 4790K system and ran some new numbers with 2400 MHz DDR3 and a locked 4.5 GHz overclock. Now I can update Windows 10 here with the new patches, but it's unknown whether board manufacturers will be issuing patches at the BIOS level. So there are still security implications here, but at least the Windows patches are in place. Assassin's Creed Unity, again, no impact to performance whatsoever. Crisis 3, yeah, again, not much going on here. A 2% drop across the whole two minute bench. The Witcher 3, yeah, funny this, bearing in mind the results we had on the i5-8400, there's only a 3% drop here. So obviously it's early days overall. We are logging some performance drops with the patches in place, but I don't think we're seeing anything to make us worry about our PCs suddenly exhibiting noticeably worse frame rates. And in turn, the kind of gaming power balance between Intel and AMD doesn't really shift here. Intel is still ahead in this regard. But again, this is just a very limited range of data taken from a similarly limited array of sources, but it does seem to tie in with the kind of results I'm seeing from similar tests elsewhere on the web. But anyway, I really wanted to check it out for myself to see what kind of additional insight our tools could add to the growing wealth of data out there. So that's where I'm gonna leave things for now. Please do like and subscribe if this video was useful to you. And remember to follow us on Twitter for all of the latest DF updates. But that's all from me for now. Thanks for watching.